Jesus begins his miraculous ministry at a wedding feast, and a big one at that. Many guests had been invited, but it turns out the most important guests were Mary and Jesus. They came, and actually they saved the feast. It had gone on a lot longer, and people had drank a lot more than had been anticipated. And Mary, sensing the embarrassment of the host, went to Jesus and said, they've run out of wine. And Jesus performs this extraordinary miracle of changing water into wine at that great wedding feast. Now today, marriage, unfortunately, is in trouble on so many levels. First of all, more people are deciding to forego it all together, not to get married, simply to live together. And generally they'll say, well, we don't need a piece of paper to prove our love. But marriage is much more than a piece of paper. When two people marry, they get up before their family and friends, before the state and before God and say, we love each other so much that we're going to commit our entire lives to one another. And not only when things are going well, but when things get rough, we're going to stick with it. And we're going to do this for the sake of one another and any children that may be coming our way. And we're going to have our love be exclusive. We're going to be faithful to one another. And they make those solemn promises before family and friends and the state and before God. It's quite different than simply moving in together. What does that mean? When two people move in together, are they committed for life? Well, generally, the very fact that they're foregoing marriage means that they're not certain how long it'll last. Well, we'll see how things work out. Maybe we'll get married later. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll stay together. Maybe we won't. It shows a profound lack of faith in themselves as individuals and themselves as a couple. And any children that come from such a union are also on shaky ground. Mommy and Daddy aren't married. Why? Will they stay together? Won't they? There's a great uncertainty there. And then there's implications for the community as a whole and the state as well. If people split up, there is no criterion for material goods as well as emotional. It's a very iffy situation. And yet we know all of our families have someone in that circumstance. And we have to pray that their thoughts and hearts and minds are cleared so they can make a decision that will be a godly one before their lives turn ungodly. Now, in marriages, people can be validly married, say, outside the church, in a state and civil ceremony. And that ceremony is very important because it becomes clear what these two people are committed to, fidelity and a lifelong commitment. We know the divorces are a reality, but nevertheless, that's the initial commitment. And people that do that show that they have a serious intention towards one another. And the church recognizes such marriages as for non-Catholics as valid and as something that will be respected. However, there is this other notion of getting married in a believing community, in the church as a religion, and then in the church as a physical place. When two people come together and they have the same religious values and backgrounds and commitments, 
their life is going to be a lot easier than those that come from different religious and spiritual backgrounds. It doesn't mean it can't, can't work, it can't be worked out, but it is more difficult. And it's important that when people are courting and falling in love, they know what the spiritual values of their boyfriend or girlfriend are or aren't. Many times people have been dating a long time. They suddenly are in infatuation. They're falling in love. They know what their favorite Chinese foods are, but they might not even know what religion they belong to. <laughs> Or if they know the person is a Lutheran or a Catholic, they won't know if the person goes to church or not, whether the person prays or not. These should be high up on the priority list of anyone who's seriously looking for a lifelong partner because marriage is without a spiritual foundation, without prayer, generally don't have a prayer. So this has to be one of the most important considerations for anyone in choosing, first of all, a boyfriend or girlfriend, and then a fiancé. What are their spiritual values? Do they coincide with mine? Are my spiritual values deep enough and personal enough and profound enough to sustain me in love for a lifetime? and to sustain any human love I might have in a lifetime. It's very important to think of these things. Now, there is the very natural notion of physical attraction, which is so important in marriage. But sometimes physical attraction, as we all know, is something fleeting and passing. The reason why many marriages end in divorce is because when people enter the marriage, the man and woman have two different sets of unrealistic expectations. Generally, the bride's thinking, boy, my husband's almost perfect, and after I worked on him for a year or two, he will be perfect. The poor guy, in order to get to that point in the marriage, has put forth his best effort, and he's just waiting to relax. <laughs> Meanwhile, the man is looking at his bride, and he says, boy, she's great. She laughs at my every joke. She goes to every sporting event with me. Uh, she's never going to gain a pound of weight. <laughs> she's going to look today perfect, and 30 years from now, she's going to look the, exactly the same way. She's never going to change. The man's expecting the bride never to change. The bride's expecting the groom to change. <laughs> and both of those things don't work out. So there has to be a constant work at the love relationship, which requires God, the angels, and the saints to be involved in that great loving pilgrimage. And so it's a very sacred and profound notions that people have when they enter in to a sacred and holy matrimony. And then we come to the point of the physical place of the marriage. Why do we get married in a church? Couldn't we get married out in a park where God's nature is on display, where we have the sky as the ceiling? Well, there can be valid marriages outside of a church, but really not for Catholics. <laughs> because we come to a sacred place. We come to a place consecrated to God. We come to a place that has had the hopes and dreams and the sorrows and the tears of one generation after another absorbed into it. And sometimes in ancient churches for centuries, not just generations. And we come before the Eucharistic presence of Christ to proclaim the sacred and solemn vows of matrimony. This is important because over the course of the marriage, other things will happen. The people will need the prayers of their family and friends and their parishes. They're going to need the spiritual support of pastors and deacons and religious sisters and brothers and nuns. 
It's not simply a couple going it alone. And if they're blessed with children, they'll bring to a church the child to be baptized, to be incorporated into the body of Christ. They'll raise their children in the church, preparing them for Holy Communion, and ultimately preparing some of them for marriage, others for religious life, others for a decent single life in this world. And when life has run its course, as it inevitably does, and when death overcomes one or both of the partners, it will be from a church that their remains will be blessed and taken to their final resting place. And when the individual or the couple steps into eternity, they will be joining the people of God who have gathered in the assembly and church after church around the world, around the globe, throughout the centuries, and they will feel at home worshiping before the throne of God because they became used to worshiping God in this world. So it is important, the physical location of a marriage and how it takes place and the words and signs and symbols that are involved in that. And such a marriage is like the marriage at Cana because Jesus and Mary will be there at the very beginning. Now, many times on the news, we see these novelty marriage. Couple gets married while skydiving, you know, because they're skydivers. Or couple gets married under the water because they're scuba divers and there's fish going by, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> well, sort of a nice little novelty. You might do that for your first anniversary. But the actual sacred basis of a relationship can't be because you both like skydiving or you don't mind goldfish swimming by you. That can't be it. It has to be rooted in the God of love, in the sacred, the holy, and the numinous. And then when the bad times come, and they do in every marriage, people have a basis to weather the storms of life and to have their lives proved to be profoundly meaningful and profoundly loving.